Despite a growing surge in the idea that you can be fit and fat or overweight and healthy, researchers in Canada say it's not really true because your weight can determine your life expectancy. Joining me with more on weight loss and health are Dr. Ken Fujioka, Director of Nutrition and Metabolic Research at the Scripps Clinic and Scripps Center for Weight Management, and Katie Ferraro, Registered Dietitian, Author, and Nutrition Lecturer. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Dr. Fujioka, roughly a third of Americans are obese uh, at this time. Medically speaking, when is someone obese versus overweight? Yeah, that's a really good question because it's a hard one to answer in the sense that it varies. So some folks, it could be 25 pounds and they're overweight and becoming obese. And that's usually, unfortunately, Asians and Hispanics because they don't tolerate weight gain very well and they gain the weight in the wrong place. Whereas Caucasians, African Americans, 30, 40, almost 50 pounds before they run into those medical problems and are, quote, obese. Well, going on that, certain health problems like high blood pressure, heart disease, and even diabetes in some cases can also be found in people who are skinny or fat. So what is the connection between obesity or being overweight and these, these diseases? Okay, million dollar question because it's how you gain your weight. Some, some people, they gain the weight all over, no problem, they do fine. But if somebody's where they gain that weight centrally, they just get that little belly, but it just keeps getting bigger, they're not getting it in their thighs, they're not in their hips, that's the person who runs into the medical problems. And, and you can run into those medical problems uh, regardless of your weight as well. That's right, you can have a fairly low weight, and yet because you're gaining the weight in the wrong place, you run into problems. I see. Now, Katie, you've said everyone should eliminate the word uh, diet from their vocabulary. How come? If you think about the notion of going on a diet, there's inherently going to be the time when you go off the diet. So a diet simply refers to the accumulation of the foods that we eat. But instead, if we can think about making healthier changes as a lifestyle change, I just eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I just exercise three to five hours a week. That's gonna be a more long-term approach than I need to lose 10 pounds for my high school reunion in a couple of weeks. You're more likely to keep it off, I assume, by, by changing the habits. Now, you have some top tips for healthy eating and exercises, uh, some, some pretty uh, simple ones. I think one of the keys for sticking with a healthful eating plan is focus on the foods you can eat more of. And one of the things we can all stand to eat more of is dietary fiber from fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes like dried peas and beans or lentils. Those foods fill us up, they make us feel satiated, they help prevent hunger, plus they tend to be lower in calories than some of the lower fiber foods. So I say focus on what you can eat as opposed to what you can't. And then you also had a good idea as far as when it comes to exercising or even eating about a partnership. Working with a partner helps build accountability. If you've got a buddy waiting for you at 5 a.m. who's gonna go for that brisk walk, you're not gonna hit the snooze and roll over and go back to sleep. Find someone who can work out with you and also find someone who shares the same eating patterns as you. Can you share recipes or even weeknight meals so that you're accountable to someone and someone else is relying on you? Well, speaking about exercise, uh, Dr. Fujioka, what should you do if you're overweight? It's the new year, you've made this resolution. Uh, what should you do before you start an exercise program or how should you do it? Okay, probably the most important thing is don't start out really hard because there's a very good chance up to 50% you're gonna get hurt. Don't want that because you get injured, you can't exercise. So one is start off very slowly and don't be afraid to get professional help if you need to. Uh, the other one is it, when you're looking at what you're gonna do, you need to do a, actually a combination. They've actually looked at what is the best exercise to lose weight. And it turns out it's a combination of resistance training. So maybe some push-ups, sit-ups or weights but mostly cardio, so doing cardio and some resistance training. So doing both, start slow, don't hurt yourself. And who should go see a doctor first? Okay, so if somebody has medical problems, particularly diabetes or blood pressure, where they're on medications that, well, as you lose weight or as you get in shape, your blood pressure comes down, your blood sugar comes down, so you may not need as much of those medications. I see. And um, on the food side of the equation, Katie, how long does it take to undo the damage of eating poorly for a long period of time? One of the best things about using the power of food as medicine is that you can see results almost immediately, even if the number on the scale doesn't change. And we see that particularly with regards to walking and blood pressure. And I have patients that have high blood pressure. If they've exercised yesterday, 
their blood pressure is lower today than if they didn't exercise yesterday. And when it comes to things like your cholesterol and your triglycerides, making changes in diet, again, even if the weight doesn't change, you sometimes can see changes in those lipid profiles in as short of a period as six weeks. I see. And Dr. Fujioka, the CDC last year just released this report saying that you could be obese. It wouldn't necessarily make you unhealthy. But then in December, the study that we're talking about compiled data from mort uh, mortality uh, statistics and said, no, obesity is directly linked to a higher risk of early death. Is is there a middle ground here or is the data pretty clear on being a healthy weight? Yeah, there's probably a middle ground. So there are some of these folks that gain weight and they actually do okay. It's a small number though. It's less than 10%. So if you had 10 people that are overweight, one of them might do okay. But the other, again, depending on if you gain the weight in the wrong place, nine out of 10 are gonna do poorly. If you gain the weight kind of all over, it's gonna be about seven eight out of 10. So go with the majority, uh, Dr. Fujioka and Katie Ferraro. Thank you so much. Thank you. An honor.